So, look, we're going to um, be chatting with uh, Harry Alford with the uh, National Black Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, you know, it, it's basically the organization is uh, dedicated to economically empowering and sustaining African-American communities through entrepreneurship and capitalistic activity within the United States and via interaction with the black diaspora. Great word, diaspora. So with us, or without any further ado, is Harry Alford, the president, CEO, and co-founder of the National Black Chamber of Commerce. Harry, are you with us? Good evening. How are you? I'm uh I'm doing good, man. Uh, other than you know uh, Karen and and yourself and you know trying to make sure that we don't go go underwater. Um, yeah, think, we're, we're doing a lot better in Louisiana, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, uh, I what tell a you tragic what, situation. All it yeah. takes is one conversation with a you know an Alabaman uh, or uh, or Louisiana and and uh, and to to kind of put all that in perspective. Well, thanks for coming on. Look, I know you've had a you know you guys have been really busy lately. Um, I I I do <laughs> I do have to to pick on our our good president who who has found it uh in his wisdom that to uh to to really support another black chamber of commerce whose mission is and I I want you to sort of contrast uh once I read this there you're, there's a competitor of y'all's that I I had to look up because I just couldn't help myself um I'm not going to say the name of it but you know they're not the real deal you are so it uh, says their mission is to provide committed and visionary leadership and advocacy in the realization of economic empowerment through the creation of resources and initiatives to support African-American chambers of commerce and business organizations in their work of developing and growing black enterprises. What is I mean, that? that, that that's <laughs> like six steps to get to the entrepreneur. Yeah. Really, I think I, what I envision, what I envision there is that okay. First, we go to the UN, okay, uh, get their <laughs> money, give it to the US. They'll give it to a state. The states will give it to a chamber of commerce. The chamber of commerce will give it to another business organization, and the business organization will eventually, maybe, I don't know, you know, hold a bake sale or something. I just Sur- surrender I, the I, workers I, to the unions. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, is it is it about unions? How dare you? Oh, really? surrender the workers to the unions and take away the entrepreneurship and the capitalism about it, free markets, and have the government dictate how a company should be, and come to consensus with the big union bosses. Yeah, you know it's funny. I'm all about advocacy, and I think every organization should be about advocacy. But that's, I mean, that looks like that's what all this is. In other words, let's get other people's money to give to us to support the black community. You have a different perspective on that, though. Well, that's an oxymoron. And, and and what we did, my wife and I co-founded the National Black Chamber of Commerce after studying this issue of economic empowerment, which was lacking in black communities everywhere, you know, all cities, small towns, and what have you. Sure. And it was Booker T. Washington in 1902, who said what we need to do, freed slaves, is to form our businesses, do business with each other, hire our own, and we will prosper in this great country. It is built on capitalism. And the message was so clear that Henry Ford and Andrew Carnegie funded his National Negro Business League, which is what we did. We picked up off the National Negro Business League. Teddy Roosevelt invited him to the White House and said, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. You are taking the Negro into, that that was a common term back then, into (laughs) America. Well, you know, Calvin Calvin Coolidge said that the business of America is business, right? I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. that's what we do. Sure, you know, um, and 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 the the number one the great the greatest quote I've heard lately is from Thomas Sowell who said, uh, "If you really want to help, and I think it was in response to the Obama mantra of, hey, you know, we should all uh, instead of focusing on making money, you know, we should you know be a public service." And Thomas yeah, Sowell said, after he's made well, his money, want, right? Yeah. yeah, if if yeah, after he gets his money, if you want to be a public servant, create a job. You know, I mean, that's the best thing you can do is is create Absolutely. wealth and jobs, you know. It, it is true. It is tried and has made America the greatest country on earth. Why well, we are at that? a crossroads. So talk a little bit about uh, how, you know, from the from the black entrepreneur community, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, 
what kind of decisions need to be made over the next few weeks and months in Washington, D.C. about our fiscal situation that that uh, so talk about that if you could. Hey, well, first, you know, looking at the macro sense of it, America is a debtor nation right now, which needs to fix that because we are reliant upon people who don't really like us that much, who are <laughs> holding our paper. And right. when you've got a mortgage holder or a banker holding your line of credit and he hates you, it becomes <laughs> very easy for him to hurt you. And we need to understand that we have got to pay it down and be fiscally responsible as the founders of this nation intended us to be. We are playing loose. We're playing laissez-faire with the future of our children and our grandchildren. This is very serious stuff. We are starting to look like the Soviet Union before it went down. And that's what made it go down. They couldn't handle their own economy. Right, but Mr. Alfred, I mean, all that money that we're borrowing from China is going to, you know, to support minority businesses in urban neighborhoods, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's well, funny. I mean, okay, so, so <laughs> you know, let me ask you something. Let sure. me pick on you a little bit because, uh, you know, again, looking through your website, you guys have a fantastic organization. <clears throat> um, do, you, do you feel like uh, pointing pointing black entrepreneurs to – Minority business and disadvantaged business enterprise opportunities is, uh, you know, intellectually consistent with, uh, you know, staying independent of the government. Or do you feel like that's that those sorts of preferential uh, programs are, you know, copacetic and cool? They're not working, you know. And, and I just looked at the latest figures, uh, and I'm going to write the administrator of the Small Business Administration to let her know that I have the figures. Right. I had one of my, my one of my techies tap into uh, some data from the uh, GSA right. that shows after, what, 30, 40 years of these programs, 40 years, 40 years we African Americans are doing about 1.5% of the federal procurement. 1.5% were 14% of the population. So right. it's not working. It's okay. not working. And what, what needs to happen is, as Booker T. Washington said back in 1902, he founded this national business organization 10 years before the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that if sure. we just build entrepreneurs, they would take care of our communities. They would hire sure. We could recycle the dollars. And my goodness, I mean, people come from Hong Kong, come from China, come from India, and show us every day that they can do this. They get into their communities. They build their own stores. Right their own dry right. cleaners, their own gas stations, and they recycle those dollars, and then they send their kids to the best colleges we have. That's what you need to do. And right. somehow they, they put up these organizations, these social organizations, to counter what Booker T. Washington was saying that says the government should take care of us. And it's the responsibility of the government to ensure that if we get poor, they will assist us. No, 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 no. Everybody stand up on their own. And total line. That's right. Yeah, Frank Lentz Lentz, uh, wrote a book, Win, which I'm reading right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments, he was giving an address um, for some graduates. I believe it was Princeton, but I may be wrong on that. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't think about what job you're going to get when you leave. Think about what business you're going to create. Be entrepreneurs. Don't just go work for somebody. And he said, light bulbs were going off everywhere like oh we can do that you know and we've really gotten off the beaten path of what the foundation of this country is and that is really the ability to go out and make it on your own you know go and take that risk and a lot of times it is a risk and a lot of us don't succeed when first we try just get but back up I try yeah. again, you get back up and you do it and you know it's interesting in the programs that they the, the tarp money that they set aside for businesses that you're talking about they're still I think it was $200 million available that has not been tapped into because nobody's willing to go and take the risk right now. Everyone says, oh, well, there's free money coming my way. We've got food stamps, and uh, I I think they're talking about now, the Obama administration is talking about actually staying foreclosures if you're unemployed. 